what I would like to share with you is just a, a few aspects pertaining not to the national level, but to the level of the presidencies and chief executive officers of universities. It is clear that before the pandemic, we, there was a call for disruptive innovation. When the pandemic hit, we all had to innovate disruptively or not, but we had to, we had no option. I think that one of the criticisms that higher education historically receives, which is that we're too slow to act, the pandemic forced us to react. The important thing, of course, is not to continue coping with what has happened or the lingering situation, but to try to make sense of how all of this impacts the post-pandemic era. I refuse to call it new normal because we've had new normals over the past 15 years, several already. So we'll just call it post-pandemic. And I think that uh, surely throughout the conference, there have been comments, uh, trends, best practices. I think what we need to realize is that from an emergency stage, we move to a transition stage we need to be prepared for the transformation stage. I believe that what's important, again, highlighting the role of leaders is to underscore some of the things that we will be faced with and that in one way or another, depending the context where we are at, depending institution that we lead in order to move forward and make effective the institutional mission. We, we had a, the triannual conference, Remus, in July. So we had 400 universities, 40 participants, and I will allow myself to draw without specifying who said it, a couple of things that I think would be important to uh, contribute to this panel. Number one, that as leaders, we need to embrace nimbility. We've heard of the concept of nimble and quick. Nimbility is a step further beyond that. We need to put on our bifocal lenses and exercise bifocal leadership, which is, of course, mining the here and now, stabilizing and balancing the institution, but rallying the forces, so to speak, to move forward. We also need to be focusing on short, accessible, laser precision types of skills that along with the aspiration of developing the whole person, we also need to reinforce in a different type of economy. The intercultural, the international, the development of the whole individual, I think needs to be uh, underlined. There are some concepts such as the academic bank of credit, that our colleagues from India put on the table. And that's that uh, we need to acknowledge that throughout the life cycle in the future, more graduates will have concluded their studies having gone to more than just one or two institutions, maybe three, four, or five. And accordingly, higher education institutions need to be prepared to recognize, acknowledge that, and grant the appropriate recognition for that. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm taking one away from Paco, but he espouses more personalized programs and more individual learning. Very important in the future. The pandemic taught us that student mental health and student success is an area that we need to emphasize. The previous speaker was talking about Einstein. Every society has Einsteins. We need as higher education institutions to seek and develop that talent while at the same time considering diversity and inclusion as a strength, not as an obligation. We need to connect to the community much better. We need to show empathy, solidarity, flexibility, and opportunity. And I think that in the end, whatever we do, we need to be mindful of mission, quality, of course, operational and financial sustainability, and we need to be strategic. We cannot be all things to all people. And as university leaders, 
we need to be mindful of the fact that we are moving from what we call a university to a multiversity, multiple constituents, multiple modes of delivery, multidisciplinary, multi many things. And accordingly, higher education has to rise to the occasion. Moving towards the concluding remarks, I'll draw a few things that Arthur Levine recently spelled out in the Chronicle of Higher Education in terms of where higher education might be headed. Number one, institutional control will decrease and the power of consumers will increase. He establishes an analogy based on what has happened in the music, movie, and newspaper industry, where a lot of what is done is based on choice. Institutions will need to be positioned so that this can be offered to learners. New post-secondary entities will enter the marketplace. That has already been happening. The model of higher education focusing on time, process, and teaching will be eclipsed by a knowledge economy successor rooted in outcomes. The dominance of degree and just-in-case education will diminish, moving towards non-degree and towards what Levine calls just-in-time education and where the future is going to be competency-based. All in all, I think that we need to, yes, take note of how we've been impacted negatively, but also of the positive things that have occurred. And in closing, I think that I would offer you a reflection or observation on the part of Tom Friedman, New York Times. More people have communicated, collaborated, and competed in more ways across more countries and with more people than ever before. We need to make sense of what we've experienced and prepare for the post-pandemic.